Hey there, thank you so much for joining us on this Tuesday. Always good to see you. I'm Veronica De La Cruz. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you right now. Carly Russell's attorney finally ends the mystery. There was no kidnapping on Thursday, July 13th, 2023. We cannot let one case set a precedent for all missing persons cases of color because we cannot afford to lose the progress that we have made. And today, President Biden will honor a pivotal moment in the civil rights struggle. He did whistle. But whistling is not a, should not be a death sentence. This memorial comes at a time in our country where black rights and civil rights are being fought over state by state. It's awful. Like, you shouldn't have to um, decide whether you should pay a student loan or if you should keep a roof over your head. If I die owing money, oh well. in Alabama with a kidnapping turned hoax. Carly Russell was said to have disappeared for two days. She became the focus of a massive search, but it turns out there was no toddler wandering next to an interstate when she called 911 and she was never kidnapped. National correspondent Stephanie Sandoval has the details. The Alabama woman who earlier this month went missing for 49 hours is now confirming to police that she was never kidnapped at all. Her attorney sent a statement to the police chief of Hoover, which is 12 miles outside of Birmingham, that says there was no kidnapping and that his client did not see a baby on the side of the road and that she never even left the city. The search for Russell began after she disappeared less than two weeks ago after calling 911 about a child she says she saw walking on the side of Interstate 459 outside Hoover. But investigators started questioning the validity of her story after they found internet searches on her phone like, do you have to pay for an Amber Alert? Also searching that Liam Neeson movie taken about a woman who is abducted. Russell told detectives she was abducted by a man when she pulled over on the side of the highway to help the toddler, claiming she was then held captive at a home where a woman fed her cheese crackers but eventually escaped. Hoover police said yesterday that despite this turn of events, the investigation continues. We'll continue to investigate. We're still trying to determine where, those, where she was those, during those 49 hours. But uh, I am glad that we received this. It, it at least puts, uh, puts some of the social media super sleuths uh, hopefully at rest for a little bit. Police also not ruling out that Russell could face criminal charges, but the case could have even uh, far-reaching implications, according to Natalie Wilson, a co-founder of the Black and Missing Foundation. We cannot let one case set a precedent for all missing persons cases of color because we cannot afford to lose the progress that we have made. And Wilson also told Morning Rush last week that 40% of those reported missing are people of color and that social media coverage is often the best way to make sure that these cases go viral in an effort to bring them home. Guys. All right, Stephanie, thank you for that. So the Justice Department is suing Texas and its governor, Greg Abbott, over a floating barrier in the Rio Grande. The roughly 1,000 foot barrier is a tactic designed to keep migrants from crossing into the United States illegally. The DOJ filing comes after the Republican governor refused to comply with a request to remove it. The suit says Texas installed it illegally without permission from the cities on both sides of the border. National political correspondent Kevin Cerilli joins us now live from Washington. So, Kevin, uh, let's go ahead and take a closer look at this. This is all happening despite illegal border crossings falling sharply in the last few months. So what is at the heart of this issue and, and what comes next? Eagle Pass, that's the portion about a thousand feet of the Rio Grande River, Veronica, that this is precisely impacting. And already within the last fiscal year, there's been more than 200,000 immigrants crossing uh, through the border. Uh, but this thousand feet of buoy is equivalent to the lengths of, of just more than three football fields. And for Texas Governor Greg Abbott, a Republican, he says it's needed as a deterrent but Democrats are pushing back. Uh, I want to play for you what the governor said on Fox News and then follow it up quickly with what White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre had to say about pushing back forcefully from the Department of Justice. Here they are. 
We believe that statute does not apply in any way uh, because uh, what the state of Texas is doing uh, through those buoys uh, is not in violation of that statute because Texas is defending its sovereignty and its constitutional right to secure the border of our state and our country. And instead of wanting to, or undermining, I should say, instead of coming to the table and trying to figure out a way to work together, uh, he continues to do this really uh, cruel, uh, unjust, inhumane uh, ways of moving forward with a, with a system that has been broken for decades. Bipartisan comprehensive immigration reform has eclipsed and eluded really uh, previous sessions of Congress as well as both the Biden administration and former President Trump's administration. And perhaps that's because Americans are so divided on, on the issue of immigration. If we pull up the most recent Gallup tracking poll, 68 percent of Americans think immigration is a good thing compared with just 27 percent who think it's a bad thing. But when we dig a little deeper into that poll, Americans' views on immigration in the United States, 73 percent of Republicans think that immigration should decrease compared with just 18 percent of Democrats. And perhaps there might be one issue uh, from a national security perspective, Veronica, as it relates to an area where there could be collaboration from both parties, and that's on stopping the flow of fentanyl from China into uh, Latin and South America, which, of course, have been given to the drug cartels in order to uh, smuggle it into the United States and, and pertaining uh, to the opioid epidemic. That's something that the Biden administration and the State Department are looking to combat uh, and has gotten Republican support. And and then finally, the issue of immigration likely going to come up at that first Republican presidential debate. Polls suggest uh, that immigration for Republicans is always consistently ranked as one of the top five issues that motivates them to turn out to the polls. Veronica? Yeah, this really has been a wedge issue for a long, long time. Kevin's really live in Washington. Kevin, thank you. Overseas now to Ukraine, the defense minister there saying that his troops will continue targeting Russian-occupied Crimea and the key bridge connecting it to Russia. Ukrainian drones struck an ammunition depot in Crimea yesterday. And take a look, you can see the smoke there in the distance. While officials acknowledge Ukraine's counteroffensive is behind schedule, the country's defense minister says that his forces are fighting strategically. Small tactics to ruin logistic lines of your enemy to stop the um, options to get more ammunition, to get more fuel, to get more food, etc., etc. That's why we will uh, use these tactics against them. Now, the Biden administration plans to send up to $400 million in additional military aid to Ukraine, and that includes a number of surveillance drones, armored vehicles, and air defense systems. The U.S. has provided more than $41 billion in military aid to Ukraine since the invasion began. And the fighting is most intense on the front lines. A minefield separates trenches of two competing armies and soldiers waiting for the signal to surge ahead. Correspondent Jason Blini got an up-close look at Ukraine's foxholes. The Zero Line, combat at its most intense. Video captured by GoPro cameras mounted on helmets. Now a grim hallmark of this war, capturing action at the micro level. Hello, Jason. All along the 600-mile front line, hundreds of thousands of troops wait for their moment to move forward. A territorial defense unit takes us to their stretch of turf in the Zaporizhia sector over a perilous bombed out road to what on the map looks like a clearly colored divide. Green and blue for Ukrainian controlled territory, red for Russian. In actuality, between the two exists an unmarked reality. We're less than a mile away from the Russians' position. Out there is what's known as the gray zone the no man's land between the Ukrainian and Russian armies. The gray zone's parameters are defined by trenches like these and the soldiers defending them, like this acting commander of 1st Platoon, call sign Psi. Do you ever see the Russians on the other side? Yes, we have seen them many times. We go into the gray area, work there, and see what they are doing. Enemies monitoring each other, each with their drones, looking for troops to target. Well, I hear a drone. It's our drone. Okay, good. Back from the uh, reconnaissance. Okay, good. The sergeant bears responsibility for his unit protecting this small stretch of frontline domain. 
This is a passageway to get between their positions. The one we're going to is where they have their machine gun. This Soviet-era machine gun fires these large caliber rounds and can fire 600 of them per minute. It's here they wait for other soldiers to clear the way because the only way past the gray zone is through the minefield. Do you think you're going to be in this position much longer? I think no. I think that very soon we will go forward. But when you go forward, you're not going to have all this. There, we will build a new one. What will the second wave look like? The commander of the 72nd Brigade, Nazari Kishak, describes to us a leapfrog strategy that begins with his infantry assault teams crossing the gray zone. If the infantry is advancing, pushing the Russians back, do you move with them? If we are successful, we are immediately entrenched in new positions and they call in additional infantry to stay there. I send the people who stormed forward back so they can rest and sit in reserve in case of a counterattack. Kishak says he's applying his NATO training, breaking up his units into smaller, more nimble groups that are gaining experience, improving every day. We have come through and seen what the entire world has not seen. We are ready for any challenges because we are fighting for our country. We are hardened by hell. And more awaits beyond the gray zone. Jason Bellini, Scripps News, the Zaporizhia sector of Ukraine's front line. And you can take a deeper dive on all of these stories and much more online. Check us out at Scripps News on X, which is formerly known as Twitter, also on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and on Threats. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, a monument to honor two people important to the civil rights movement. Find out who President Biden is honoring after a quick break. Also, we'd like to hear from you. Give us a call right now on our Scripps News Viewer Hotline. That number is toll-free, and it's on your screen. It's one 4 scripts Feel free to share your comments and your story ideas. We'll be right back. If you, like many people, are covered by both Medicare and your state's Medicaid, here's something important to know. Now you could get even more health benefits than you already have. It's the United Healthcare Dual Complete Plan. To find out if you or someone you care about is eligible, it's easy. Call now to talk with us. We can explain it all and answer your questions. Medicaid gives you benefits and Medicare gives you some too. But a dual complete plan can add even more benefits and features compared to original Medicare. You'll have lots of doctors and hospitals to choose from. Zero dollar copays on all covered prescriptions, including brand names. And depending on where you live, you could enjoy other benefits too, like more dental care and rides to and from your doctor or pharmacy. Most plans even give you up to $300 a month to help pay for covered over-the-counter products, groceries, and new this year, utility bills. And best of all, with this plan, there's no extra cost to you. Remember, if you have Medicare and Medicaid, chances are you could get a dual complete plan. So call now to talk with us. Our agents are available to help. We know healthcare can be confusing. United Healthcare can straighten things out. And with over 40 years of experience, you can count on us to be there for you. With a dual complete plan, you could have a wide choice of doctors to choose from. Zero dollar copays on all covered prescriptions, help paying for covered over the counter products, groceries, and utility bills. More dental coverage, too, all at no extra cost. If you have both Medicare and Medicaid, you may be eligible for dual complete. So call the number on your screen now to see if you're eligible or to enroll. There's more for you with the United Healthcare Dual Complete Plan. If you're living with diabetes, this is the sound that could change your life. Great news for people living with diabetes. Now you can wear a continuous glucose monitor and eliminate routine finger sticks. The days of repeated painful finger sticks are over. Call 800-719-8907. If you use insulin daily to manage your condition, a continuous glucose monitor could help you control your diabetes and reduce or eliminate those painful finger sticks. If you have Medicare or private insurance, US Med can deliver a CGM system right to your door. And if you qualify, there may be little or no cost to you. 
Shipping is free and we'll even bill your insurer directly. Call now to get your continuous glucose monitoring system so you can take control of your diabetes and get back to enjoying life. Call 800-719-8907. That's 800-719-8907. Welcome to Scripps News Live. The death of a son and the actions of a mother that motivated the civil rights movement will now be eternally recognized in America. President Biden is about to sign a proclamation establishing a monument to honor Emmett Till and his mother, Mamie Till Mobley. Till was the black teenager abducted and brutally killed by white supremacists in Mississippi in 1955 after he was accused of whistling at a white woman. His mother chose to hold an open casket funeral in order to show the world what had happened to her son. The president's monument designation comes on what would have been his 82nd birthday. National correspondent Tammy Eswick joins us now live. Um, Tammy, how important is this moment in U.S. history? Tell us more about the significance. Well, Veronica, when you talk to the people that were either associated with this case or just people in general in Mississippi, they say it's extremely important. Not only was it a flashpoint when it comes to civil rights in America, it also happened at a time where we had Jim Crow laws in this section of the country that were running rampant. The courthouse right behind me is where those two white men accused of killing Till who later said that they actually did kidnap and murder him, they were acquitted here. But a day like this, it brings joy to people because they understand that the impacts of it mean that they are being heard and history will move forward. Emmett Till was 14 years old, visiting relatives in Mississippi in 1955 when he was kidnapped, tortured, and killed. Carolyn Bryant Donham had accused him of whistling at her and making sexual advances at the store where she worked in the small rural community of Money. An all-white jury acquitted her husband and his half-brother of murder, but they later confessed to killing Till in an interview. President Biden's creation of a national monument honoring Till and his mother includes three sites. The first, the Roberts Temple Church of God in Christ in Chicago's Bronzeville neighborhood, where Till's funeral was held. His mother, Mamie Till Mobley, insisted on an open coffin so the world could bear witness to his violent death. Emmett Till's mother in 1955, when she made the decision to have an open casket funeral, that not only showcased and demonstrated her character, her self-determination, her activism, but it was a catalytic moment in the American civil rights movement. The second site, Grabal Landing in Tallahatchie County, Mississippi, where locals say Till's mutilated body was pulled from the Tallahatchie River. And finally, here at the Tallahatchie Courthouse in Sumner, Mississippi, where the trial of the men accused of killing the boy was held. As a student, Mississippi State Senator David Jordan attended the five-day trial. He remembers the atmosphere in the courtroom. I could tell that nobody was serious about it, kind of mockery of a trial at that time. Till's family has remained vigilant in keeping his name and the memory of his murder alive. I spoke with his cousin, Deborah Watts, last year. He did whistle, but whistling is not a, should not be a death sentence. What Emmett did not do which is what they've clarified also has made those sexual advances towards Carolyn Bryant. Designating these sites as national monuments like the Lincoln Memorial and the Little Bighorn Battlefield Monument in Montana will protect them from commercial development and vandalism would be a felony punishable by fines and up to 10 years in prison. Yeah, Veronica, and back to your question earlier, it's it's all about preserving true history, what happened, and many people say that that's what this is going to do. Back to you. All right, Tammy Eswick live for us there in Mississippi. Tammy, appreciate it. Thank you. So this afternoon, President Biden is expected to announce new steps to expand access to mental health care. The proposed rule would ensure benefits in private insurance plans more closely mirror physical health benefits. According to the administration, the action reinforces a 2008 law requiring insurers to evaluate and update their coverage. 
Now, this morning, White House Policy Advisor Neera Tanden spoke with our Haley Bull about the obstacles in meeting mental health care needs. The number of mental health challenges have increased uh, depression, anxiety, particularly amongst young people. So this is a problem we need to solve. Uh, and that's why it's really important that the entire health care system address it. I think what's important here is to remember that it, mental health care can really deliver solutions. It really does um, address the needs people have, and we just need to ensure people have the access. The White House says insurers may have to evaluate coverage based on certain criteria, and you're looking at it right there. Uh, we've got some more news on this coming up in a few hours when Biden speaks exactly to the plan. But this is like the plan's provider network, how much plans pay for out-of-network coverage, also how often prior authorization is required and then approved under existing plans. some breaking news coming into scripts right now. It appears that UPS will not go on strike. The company and Teamsters announcing a contract agreement minutes ago. The union is calling the settlement, quote, historic and overwhelmingly lucrative. It says that wage increases and benefit full and part-time employees, delivery truck drivers will also be air conditioned. Now, this deal is a five-year agreement pending approval from the rank and file. We're going to have more details for you straight ahead. Also straight ahead on Scripps News Live, we're going to show you what goes into a day's work when you're the most important person during a heat wave. We're going to tag along with an air conditioning repairman after this. Hi, I'm Kirk Kaiser, and did you know the average funeral costs around $10,000? And if you don't have enough insurance to cover funeral costs, credit card debt, and other expenses, your family is going to get stuck with the bill. Don't let that happen. Call right now. And if you're over 50, you can get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance, and your acceptance is guaranteed. That's right. If you're over 50, you can't be turned down for this insurance, regardless of your health. Plus, there's no medical exam and no health questions. Your rate will never go up. Your coverage will never go down. And rates start as low as $5 a week. Your coverage begins as soon as your application is received. Don't wait until it's too late. Just call 800-760-7793. Coverage is guaranteed regardless of your health and cannot be canceled without your approval. Don't leave your family with a huge bill for your funeral. With one fast and easy call, get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance to help cover funeral expenses and credit card debt, and maybe even leave something for your kids and your grandkids. Remember, if you're over 50, you can't be turned down regardless of your health. There's no medical exam and no health questions. Best of all, your rates start as low as $5 a week, and your rate will never increase. Nothing is more important than family. So don't leave them with a lot of bills to pay when you're gone. Don't leave your family with a lot of bills to pay for your funeral. Call right now. Acceptance is guaranteed. Call right now. Call now. Call 800-760-7793. That's 800-760-7793. How does Klein Inspector get among the most big verdicts and settlements of any law firm in the country? Because Klein Inspector is an award-winning team with five doctor lawyers, the most of any firm in the United States. And that's why the New York Times calls Klein Inspector a powerhouse law firm. So if a defective product motor vehicle accident, or medical malpractice caused a catastrophic injury, call Klein Inspector. I've been flying for over 36 years. In all of my experiences, I have never seen so much pressure on a system as I've seen now. Monster demand, staffing shortages, and possible relaxing of important safety measures. Could have had devastating consequences with precious lives lost. Scripps News breaks down the question, is it safe to fly the friendly skies? A Scripps News special report. Air pressure, airlines under fire. Wednesday at 8.30, 7.30 Central, only on Scripps News. 
research shows that climate change is a factor in heat waves taking place across Europe, China, and the United States and shows the extreme heat wouldn't have happened without the buildup of greenhouse gases, specifically heat trap gases from the burning of coal, oil, and natural gas. Now, combined with a stagnant atmosphere, researchers found the gases made the heat wave in the U.S. 3.6 degrees warmer. It pushed the European heat wave 4.5 degrees higher. Several climate experts say the Earth hasn't been this hot in about 120,000 years. So if your air conditioning goes on the fritz, the most important person in your life might be the repairman. Ford Hatchet with Scripps News Phoenix followed one man who was making his rounds. Well, what, immediately when I shake this board right here, I get some action. From the right angle, you may recognize Jesse Butler just from his hat. I run five trucks right now, so I oversee basically the entire company. He's the owner and general manager of Affordable Comfort AC and Heating. I've done, in the last seven days, we did 63 calls. It's no surprise the business has been busy during a summer of extreme heat. Outside or in an attic most of the day, sweat drops from his chin as he works. I mean, I do leave my truck running quite a bit, um, a little more than I'd like to in the summertime for the AC running, so I can jump right into an AC truck. I, I try to carry some water, Gatorade. An essential part of the toolkit is this magnetic umbrella to provide a little relief from the sun. Butler enjoys helping people, but his seven-day work weeks in the summer do keep him away from his family. In the wintertime, it's, they don't feel like that at all. But the summertime is when they got, they got the time because they're out of school. All the stuff's going on. The friends are going to the lake. And here I am going, well, maybe next week and we can, you know what I mean? So. But in temperatures above 115, getting a unit up and running for a family in need is reward enough. Like I said, this is going to be a temporary fix. I need you guys to start thinking about new equipment on this one, okay? Just because of the age of this unit. Butler says tune-ups are essential for units before problems pop up. Get, get the guy on a tune-up that's going to go up in the attic and check your units, check your ductwork, be willing to do what you want. You know what I mean? Even if it's not part of his check sheet, if you ask him to do that, he'll step out of his way to do that kind of stuff for you. That was Ford Hatchet reporting for us from Phoenix. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Thank you so much for joining us here on Scripps News Live. For the audience leaving us right now, your local programming is up next. And don't forget, you can always check us out on ScrippsNews.com. Now, if you're staying with us, we have much more news headed your way, including the Federal Reserve, with a new way for you to get your paychecks faster. Plus this. I'm Chris Conti, and as federal student loan payments are set to begin again in August, we take a closer look at why so many American families are worried. That's just, it's awful. Like, you shouldn't have to um, decide whether you should pay a student loan or if you should keep a roof over your head. We take a closer look at what repayment starting could mean for the overall economy. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait, you've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. founder of Pear Eyewear. The only glasses you can change, like you change your clothes. Each pair starts with a base frame, then choose from over hundreds of designs, like a top frame from your favorite holiday, or you can even turn your glasses into sunglasses. Every pair starts at just $60, including prescription lenses. Glasses are an extension of your personality, and we're here to celebrate each and every version of you. Discover your next pair at PearEyewear.com. 
When Lila was ready to sell her ring, she sent it to Worthy, where they took care of everything and auctioned it on her terms. Then, Worthy sent Lila her money. You're worthy of more. Get started at Worthy.com. Hey there, welcome to Scripps News Live. Great to see you on this Tuesday. I'm Veronica De La Cruz. It's time now to get you caught up on the day's top stories. An Alabama woman who claimed that she was kidnapped after seeing a toddler wandering by the side of an interstate now admits that she made it all up. Authorities say 25-year-old Carly Russell might face charges. Russell came home 49 hours after calling 911. A statement from her attorney says that she acted alone. In that statement, Russell apologized to law enforcement, volunteers, her family, and her friends. Texas Governor Greg Abbott isn't bothered by a Justice Department lawsuit ordering him to remove a floating barrier in the Rio Grande River. The governor says it's to keep migrants from crossing illegally from Mexico. His letter to the White House says, quote, Texas, we'll see you in court, Mr. President. Abbott claims the barrier would not be needed if federal policies did a better job preventing illegal migration. U.S. officials say Ukraine will soon receive up to $400 million in military aid from the United States. The package will include weaponry from advanced air defense systems and small surveillance Hornet drones. They're largely used for intelligence gathering. Well, the Federal Reserve launched a service that could get you your paycheck faster. It's called FedNow, and it's a new instant payment service the agency has been working on now for years. Similar to money transferring apps like PayPal and Venmo, this new service could be a way for customers to send and receive money instantaneously, any time of the day, and directly through their bank. FedNow will be able to clear payments such as rent and paychecks instantly instead of taking a day or two to clear. The service was announced in 2019 and the Fed released a list of banks and credit unions who signed up for the service. Now, while this could be incredibly helpful to many customers, several big banks have yet to join. Right now, only two of Bankrate's top 15 banks in America have signed up for the service. And it could actually be months or even years before your bank provides access to FedNow. Joining us now live is Mark Scribner. He is the Managing Director and Wealth Advisor at Carson Wealth of Boston. Mark, great to see you. All right. so. On the face of this, it seems like a great idea, but like I just mentioned, there is some hesitancy from some of the larger banks to get on board. Why is that? That's true. Uh, some of the banks don't even list it on their websites at the moment, like Chase and Wells Fargo. I think they're trying to figure out how to pass the cost on to the consumer because there is a cost that's associated with using the service. Um, and I think they're just kind of working out the kinks of what they'll end up charging people, similar to the way they do right now for ACH. There's a charge related to that. All right. So you're saying there is a charge for consumers. Do we know what the charge is yet and, and how this might differ from apps like Venmo or PayPal? Will it be a very similar service? It's very similar to ACH. If you go onto the Federal Reserve website, they have an initial list of what the proposed charges will be. It will be $25 and then per cents uh, per thousand dollars at the moment. But um, at the moment, they've kind of frozen those charges. So we don't know exactly what it's going to be. Um, there will be some banks that will offer it as a complement, as a, a tiered kind of service, I think. Um, but what's really cool about it is it's 24 seven. And you think about maybe buying a car on a Sunday, for example, and you can't get to the bank till Monday or you have to get a certified check. In theory, you could uh, fed now that money immediately walk out with the car without having to go back to the bank. And how does that work exactly? Is it because this money is insured by the government? Yeah, it's really the consumer or the business person's own money, um, but it is backed by the Federal Reserve. So it's it's verified real time instant payment. So if you're closing on a house, as another example, instead of getting a certified check, uh, you could hit the Fed now or the Fund now button and that will close on your house. So this is a service that is backed by the Federal Reserve, by the government. Let's talk about how this could impact a consumer. Could this have a negative consequence? I mean, for example, does this make you more vulnerable to perhaps being audited? Uh, there are some people that are fear mongers that, that say that the government can turn it off. That's kind of the blockchain conspiracy sometimes where, you know, people worry about the IRS and kind of getting, you know, access to information, but they already have access to your bank account, for example. 
Where I don't see it kind of applying every day would be like going to get coffee because it could cost five dollars if you have to pay two and a half dollars or percent. It's not really economical at the moment for small micro transactions, but I think for bigger transactions, it's going to have a lot of um, ease of use and a lot of utility. But why are we seeing this now? You had just mentioned the blockchain conspiracy theorists. Do you think cryptocurrency had an influence on the development of this service? Is the government trying to compete with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I'm not really qu quite clear on that. I think um, they definitely have seen the rise of payments and peer-to-peer -peer payments, the Venmos, the Zells, and all those out there. And there's a lot of people across the country that do payday loans where um, you know, they have to kind of pay exorbitant fees to cash their paycheck, for example. Or even ACH can sometimes take two to three business days by the time the money clears. And I, I've actually written checks on my own account. I see it leaving, you know, one account right away, but it's not credited to another bank for three or four days. So I think they're just trying to get along with the times and kind of compete or just have easier ways for people to transact uh, large transactions. I know, you know that the other alternative would be, I'm sorry, uh, like a wire, for example, those are very expensive. They take a long time and they're hard to verify. So this is instantaneously, obviously, from, from the way that you're describing it. But I wanted to ask you specifically about Bitcoin. I know that the government has been trying to regulate digital currency like Bitcoin for quite some time now, cryptocurrency, which really goes against the ethos of what cryptocurrency is. Do you think that now that we're seeing a service like FedNow, the government will finally launch their own digital currency? Uh, you know, there's a couple proposals out there right now to regulate cryptocurrency by a couple prominent senators. I definitely think that the industry in the blockchain and the crypto space um, needs regulation. Um, but this will be a, a competition for, for payments. And um, there has been a big push for like the Ethereum's of the world to like have immediate payments and micro payments and stuff. But it is going to be some form of competition, but I don't know if it competes head to head with cryptocurrency at the moment. Yeah, and I think the banks ultimately will feel like they're losing out, you know, on another source of revenue, which is probably why they're not signing on right now. Uh, but Mark, before I let you go, I wanted to ask you about other countries. Are we seeing this pop up in Europe and in other areas or is it just the United States? Not on the government level, you know, places like, for example, India, they use a lot of peer to peer or their cell phones to move money around. And, and that's not backed by anything other than technology and it's hacked and, and uh, there's not a lot of protection there. So um, I think we're the first from a government perspective to try to launch these these payment systems and probably other kind of emerging markets or developed countries will start to follow along as long as it becomes a standard. But it's still fairly new. All right, Mark Scribner with Carson Wealth Boston. Mark, great to see you. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for having me. Well, more than 43 million people in the U.S. have student loans. Payments will be resuming soon after they were paused during the pandemic. National correspondent Chris Conti says a lot of borrowers are worried about what it's going to mean for their finances. I've spent a lot of time recently talking to Americans who are carrying student loan debt, sometimes tens of thousands of dollars. And many of them are not who you might expect. There are other places Patricia Cummings would rather be in the middle of summer. And yet here she is, teaching at summer school just to make ends meet. For not only myself, but for teachers in general, you will hear a number of teachers, um, you know, say we have more than one job. Of all the reasons she got into teaching, money was not one of them. Oh, not because of the money, not at all. We make absolutely no, 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 not because of the money, not at all. Cummings is a special education teacher outside of Baltimore. She is 60 years old and has $180,000 in student loan debt from her doctoral program. That's just, it's awful. Like, you shouldn't have to um, decide whether you should pay a student loan or if you should keep a roof over your head. At the moment, Cummings' federal student loans are on hold, but that will change at the end of August after President Biden agreed to restart payments during debt ceiling negotiations. Worry has already set in for Patricia Cummings. So I'll have to cut back on a lot of things. Like, I will definitely pay my mortgage first, but like I'll have to cut back like on my grocery bill. The Department of Education estimates 43 million people in this country owe a collective $1.6 trillion in federal student loan debt. 
On average, borrowers have around $37,000 in debt. Many haven't made a monthly payment since March of 2020 when President Trump paused payments and are worried about their finances when payments come due at the end of August. I just can't breathe easy and say I'm done. Susan Vincent is among those concerned about her finances when repayments restart. The 78-year-old retired science teacher owes $30,000 in federal student loans. What is it like knowing that you might die with these student loans? <laughs> not, not paid. Uh, you know, the way I look at it, if I die owing money, oh well. I mean, I like to pay my bills, but this is not fair. Vincent owes so much money that she's come out of retirement this summer to substitute teach in New York City, just to make enough money to get by when her payments begin again. What is so unfair about it is that I did in fact do my civic duty and teach in a high need area and I'm still tutoring and substituting. And there ought to be some loan forgiveness for that. Vincent told me she's still upset about the Supreme Court's ruling that overturned President Biden's efforts to forgive some student loan debt, a case brought by Republican states which argued the forgiveness was outside of his powers. Opponents to waiving the debt say it's too expensive and unfair to people who have paid off education loans or never received them. Vincent, though, is hopeful something might change before repayments restart. It's the injustice of it, Chris, that just gets to me. Um, people in my income bracket are struggling to put food on the table. I'm not saying that they have to forgive the entire loan. But I do think that they should take into consideration each individual's situation. For now, teachers like Patricia Cummings will keep working extra hours and extra jobs, all in hopes of keeping up with her student loan payments. Chris Conti, Scripps News, Baltimore. And so the Come On Scripps News Live, how a man fell victim to a scam on Zelle after trying to sell furniture on Facebook Marketplace. Also, if you listen to Spotify, hey, get ready to shell out more money every month. How much you can expect your subscription to increase. That's next. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Back up, back up, back up. How long has she been down? How long has she been down? Is she breathing? Scripps News investigates the silent toll of the fentanyl epidemic tonight at 8, 7 central, only on Scripps News Tonight. This year, Americans will spend $41 billion on auto repairs. That's right, billions with a B. Why is that number so high? Because cars break down. Your vehicle is going to end up in a shop like this too, and if it's no longer under warranty, you're the one who has to pay the bill, and it could cost you thousands of dollars. That is, unless you call CarShield. With a plan through CarShield, administrators will pay for those costly repairs directly to the mechanic of your choice, including dealerships. That means you get protection on major parts and systems like the engine, transmission, electrical systems, and more. Plus, 24-7 emergency services for flat or damaged tires, lockouts, dead batteries, and towing at no additional cost. And there are even rental car options to keep you on the road. I've been a mechanic for 35 plus years now. I've seen thousands of repairs over the years. My happiest customers are the ones that come in do have some kind of auto protection policy that's gonna cover the repair that they wasn't expecting anyway. I feel great about recommending CarShield to everybody I see. CarShield has a rich history of dependability, reliability, and success, and has been featured on leading networks like ABC, CNN, Fox News, and more. CarShield is America's most trusted auto protection company. My mom told me to call CarShield, and I saved $5,000. You should always listen to your mom. As soon as my car broke down, CarShield jumped into action, and I had my car back within days. I've been with CarShield for close to seven years. I have three vehicles covered, and I saved close to $9,000. I called CarShield and saved over $5,000. Yes, CarShield is a good value. Every plan through CarShield comes with a price lock guarantee, which means no matter how many repairs you need, the price you pay today will never change for as long as you cover your car. Call now and save money with your price lock guarantee. It's not a matter of if your car will break down, but when. Call CarShield now before it's too late. Call 800-287-5264. 800-287-5264. Eight hundred two eight seven five two six four. 287 5264
It's Christmas all July at Balsam Hill. It's never too early to save, so why wait? Get amazing deals now on our wide variety of exclusive designs. Find the perfect tree at up to 50% off at balsamhill.com. How can a photo become a vibrant part of your home? When you go to trifracture.com and print your images directly on glass. Get beautiful depth and clarity on a sleek, frameless print that's easy to hang and looks incredible in any space. Go to trifracture.com now to save on glass prints. What should we do? I'm going to CashNetUSA.com. I can apply in minutes, and if approved, we can have the money as soon as the same business day. Go to CashNetUSA.com to apply for the money you need. There's a better way to begin your mornings. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Rush. Get the stories that will shape each day. There's a lot of folks talking about this. So you can get on with yours. Morning Rush, weekday mornings starting at 7, 6 central, only on Scripps News. A 20-year-old song granted Britney Spears access to Spotify's exclusive Billions Club. Her 2003 hit single, Toxic, surpassed 1 billion streams on the platform. She is now joining the ranks of other hit makers, including ABBA and Whitney Houston. Just last week, Spears released a new single entitled Mind Your Business, and it features Will I Am. But the pop star hasn't released an album in nearly seven years. So access to Britney Spears catalog and other artists on Spotify are going to cost subscribers extra money. The company is saying it's going to increase the premium plan by a dollar. The premium duo plan is going to go up by two dollars. This is the first price hike for Spotify since 2011. Existing premium sub subscribers will receive an email about this upcoming change. Apple Music, YouTube and Amazon have also increased their subscriptions over the past year. A new homeowner almost fell victim to a Facebook marketplace scam. He thought that he could make some extra cash by selling his old furniture, but nearly lost thousands of dollars along the way. Mallory Sofas Day with Scripps News Baltimore has the details for us. Jake Larkin was trying to avoid a scam when he fell for another. A suspicious transaction on Facebook marketplace prompted him to call Zelle customer service, but the number he found online connected him with an imposter. A quick sale took a costly turn. It wound up being me receiving $100 for a sofa to me losing $6,000 from a scammer. It was the same day Jake Larkin closed on his new home. The previous owners left their furniture, so Jake put it up on Facebook Marketplace. Right away, he got a hit on the sofa. So then I got an email through Zelle saying that in order for me to get the $100 in my account, I had to ask them for $200 more and then give them the $200 back and the remaining $100 be in my account. The email said these steps were necessary because he needed to upgrade to a business account. I thought that was very odd. I googled Zelle customer service. And he landed on this website. Jake said it was one of the first options. We also tried calling and immediately someone answered claiming to be Zell customer support. He just basically agreed with me, you know, said it's a common problem and that uh, happens all the time. And he said this is what we have to do to resolve it and just kept guiding me through steps trying to confuse me. And he did. He really just, you know, confused me. By the time I got off the phone with them and logged in my account, that's when I noticed my account was almost empty and I just started freaking out. That's when I called Bank of America. Fortunately for him, Bank of America refunded his money, but that's not always the case. And the Better Business Bureau is seeing more reports of this kind of scam on Facebook Marketplace, where the buyer appears to be local. We always ask ourselves, why are Facebook accounts hacked? What, why does that happen? And this is a great example. I would be willing to bet the legitimate person who um, has that account, their Facebook page was hacked and the scammers now using that hacked profile to establish that legitimacy. And in Jake's situation, he encountered a second scam while trying to avoid the first. In that web browser search, he was directed to a fake website. The website is directing him to a phone number for customer support. It was a scammer. The scammer then in that conversation posing as a customer support person um, actually got his bank information. With that information, he was able to wipe out the checking account very quickly. I just should have trusted my gut and I didn't. So I just trusted these people too much. And the thing is, is, you know, you get a hundred scam calls a day on your phone and you just don't, you just kind of blow it off. 
But the thing is, is that I reached out to these, I researched their number and I reached out to them. So just that fact alone, I was very trusting of them. If the buyer offers to send you money before they've seen the item in person, that's usually a red flag. And while the emails sent to Jake appeared to be from Zell, if you clicked on the sender's address, it says it was a Gmail account. Zell has their own email domain at zellpay.com or contact would be directly with your bank. That was Mallory Sofiste reporting for us from Baltimore. So FedEx pilots are going to be returning to the bargaining table after their union rejected a tentative labor deal. The union was asking for a 30 percent pay increase and an equal boost in pension benefits for nearly 5,200 pilots. Still unclear why they weren't pleased with the deal that was offered. But even with the rejection, FedEx pilots aren't expected to strike anytime soon. The nation is currently grappling right now with a pilot shortage for passenger airlines and cargo carriers. And Dwayne Johnson helping fellow actors stay financially afloat right now as they strike for better pay and working conditions. Johnson reportedly made a seven-figure donation to the SAG-AFTRA Foundation. It is the largest donation from an individual ever. The nonprofit is associated with the Screen Actors Guild and it provides grants up to $15,000 for individual members for financial assistance, also up to $6,000 for lifetime members. Now, the foundation didn't specify how much he donated, but they did acknowledge that that amount was more than a million dollars. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, hey, if you build it, you can fly. You probably wouldn't have to worry as much about those flight delays and cancellations if you build your own airplane. We'll have that for you next. Time to get up, Sunny. Most people might not think much about all the little things you do every day. But for me, just being able to do those little things is the best part of my day. Ready, Mom? It hasn't been easy, but sometimes the hardest things in life have the best rewards. And it's all because of my amazing friends at the Spartan's Hospitals for Children and people like you who support them every month. When you call the number on your screen and just give $19 a month, you'll be helping other kids like me do the amazing things that make up the best part of our day. Because Schreiner's Hospital is more than just a hospital. It's when my back gets better, where my legs get stronger, where I get to be a kid, where it's the best part of my day. With your gift of just $19 a month, only 63 cents a day, We'll send you this adorable Love to the Rescue blanket as a thank you. Please go online to loveshriners.org right now on your phone or computer to send your love to the rescue today. Will you send your love to the rescue today? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for giving. Because at Shriners Hospitals for Children, going to the hospital is like going to see family. It really is the best part of my day. Please. Call or go online right now to give. If upper is or busy, please wait patiently or go to loveshriners.org right away. Your gift will help kids just like me have the best part of our day. Hey. Hey, I'm inside the bank. Where's the $500? What? I don't have much time. Where's the $500? I said drop your bank, not rob your bank. What? I said drop your bank and get Dave. The banking app? Yeah, I thought this was a lot of work for $500. You think? I mean, I would love it if you could uh, come get me. Oh, no. Oh, she going to jail. Hello? There's an easier way you can get up to $500 in five minutes or less when you download Dave. When Lila was ready to sell her ring, she sent it to Worthy, where they took care of everything and auctioned it on her terms. Then, Worthy sent Lila her money. You're worthy of more. Get started at Worthy.com. For over 100 years, this light has shined. A beacon of the free American press. Reporting from Ukraine, Scripps News. And now, this light shines even brighter. 
Scripps News. Hey there, welcome back to Scripps News Live. So many air travelers are once again dealing with delays and cancellations at the nation's airports. Seth Humanick with Scripps News Green Bay introduces us to some pilots who are putting all of that past them by building their very own airplanes. Neighborhood reporter Seth Humanick. Aviation is a lifelong passion of everyone here at EAA's Air Venture. And many pilots even built their own aircraft, really taking ownership to the next level. It's Clover Bell. We're from Clover, South Carolina. We have had a lot of good fun together. Michael Trues arrived at Air Venture Monday in his Zenith 750 airplane. He says he bought the plane partially complete, but spent a year and a half working on the engine and finishing it up. He says Clover Bell was cheap to build and easy to maintain as well. This airplane is extremely approachable from that standpoint. You can see everything, touch everything, inspect everything and fix most things in minutes. Drew's plane was built from a kit manufactured by Zenith Aircraft. Zenith president and co-founder Sebastian Heinz says the kits his company creates help make plane ownership accessible for those who couldn't otherwise afford it. They've got wonderful airplanes on the market for two, three, four hundred thousand dollars, but that's beyond the means of the average person. Build it yourself, um, you can do that for well under a hundred thousand dollars. While allowing pilots to make them their own. In this particular airplane, it's a wonderful example. You know, he's got wonderful interior on it, a wonderful panel, and it's just, it's a one of. You're not gonna find another airplane with exactly the same. Drew says the modifications he's made to his plane will allow him to camp inside it all week, and says he's thrilled to be at AirVenture. This is the best event in the world. In Oshkosh, Seth Humanek. And finally this afternoon, there are two new treats hitting the market this summer. One sounds cold and refreshing, but the other sounds a little more out there. Wendy's is now offering Frosty Cream Cold Brews. This one sounds good. <laughs> it's one part cold brew coffee, one part frosty. It's available in three flavors, vanilla, chocolate, and caramel. The small goes for a buck 99 and they sure do look good. But check this out. There is a new item out there for those who are more adventurous. Oh, goodness gracious. These are mustard flavored Skittles. Yeah, you heard me right. Skittles has partnered with French's Mustard to come up with this new flavor. The collaboration is all part of National Mustard Day, which happens on August 5th. And if you are brave enough to try them, unfortunately, you can't find them in the store. You're going to have to look out for the Mustard Mobile, which will be hitting select cities ahead of the big release. So mark your calendar because they will be in Atlanta July 31st, then in Washington, D.C. on August 2nd. And then they will be in New York August 5th. I just don't know about that, but good luck to you. Thank you so much for watching Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica De La Cruz. Thank you so much for joining us today. For the audience leaving us right now, your local programming is up next. Don't forget, you can always check us out on ScrippsNews.com. And if you are staying with us, we have much more news headed your way on Scripps News Live, including a look at what's left on the agenda for Congress before they leave for August recess. We'll be right back. The promise of America is freedom equality. But right now, those pillars of our democracy are fragile and our rights are under attack. Reproductive rights, voting rights, the right to make your own choices and have your voice heard. We must act now to restore and protect these freedoms for us and for the future. And we can't do it without you. We are the American Civil Liberties Union. Will you join us? Call or go online to myaclu.org to become a guardian of liberty today. Your gift of just $19 a month, only 63 cents a day, will help ensure that together we can continue to fight for free speech, liberty, and justice. Your support is more urgently needed than ever. Reproductive rights are on the line. And we are looking at going backwards. We have got to be here. We've got to be strong to protect those rights. So please join the ACLU now. Call or go to myaclu.org and become an ACLU Guardian of Liberty for just $19 a month. When you use your credit card, you'll receive this special We the People t-shirt, member card, magazine, and more to show you're part of a movement to protect the rights of all people. For over 100 years, the ACLU has fought for everyone. 
to have a voice and equal justice. And we will never stop. Because we the people means all of us. So please call or go online to myaclu.org to become a guardian of liberty today. Hey there, thank you so much for joining us on this Tuesday afternoon. Great to see you today. It is now 1 p.m. in the east, 10 a.m. out west, and I'm Veronica De La Cruz. Welcome to Scripps News Live. We begin this hour with a clock now ticking on Capitol Hill. There are still lots left to accomplish before the annual August recess, which is just days away. The National Defense Authorization Act is on the list for the Senate, but there are still several issues senators need to hash out before all of that can happen, including Pentagon policies and Senator Tommy Tuberville blocking dozens of military promotions. Let's get you right out to congressional correspondent Nathaniel Reed, who joins us now live from Capitol Hill. He's been tracking all of this for us. So, Nate, we know that Congress is expected to take recess for an entire month, uh, and there's lots to that, there's lots that needs to happen before then. What exactly is on their agenda right now? Well, on the congressional agenda for the next couple of days, and I say a couple of days because at the end of Thursday is when the House and the Senate expected to get all on their planes back to their 435 districts across the country. But the two things that are really on the agenda for this week, the National Defense Authorization Act, remember that passed the House of Representatives, it still needs to pass in the Senate. Also, the House of Representatives taking up a number of 2024 spending bills to prevent a possible government shutdown. Now, there is a major obstacle here, and the obstacle could be the same one we've seen for much of the last several months, especially when that debt ceiling deal was reached. It could be the far right in the House of Representatives, the member, uh, the members of Kevin McCarthy's conference uh, who have refused so far to go along with spending hikes, many of whom want basically their way or the highway. They held a press conference this morning, the House Freedom Caucus, effectively saying just that. Take a listen. Most of the American people won't even miss if the government is shut down temporarily. But our speaker has an opportunity to be a transformational historical speaker that stare down the Democrats, that stare down the free spenders, that stare down the president and said, no, we're going to do what the American people elected us to do. And the House is going to say no. We're going to pass a good Republican bill out of the House and force the Senate and the White House to accept it or we're not going to move forward. And Congress is typically a world of compromise, especially where the House of Representatives is held by Republicans and the Senate is held by Democrats. Given that there's a number of Republicans in the Freedom Caucus who've repeatedly said that they're not willing to negotiate over certain elements of government spending means it certainly could risk a shutdown as soon as September. And Nate, it sounds like a lot could get pushed to the very last minute. Uh, should we worry about the possibility of a shutdown? Well, what's interesting is, Veronica, later in that press conference, members of the press asked the members of the House Freedom Caucus that very question. Should we be, we be worried about a government shutdown? Here's what they said. Worried about a, uh, uh, a government shutdown at this point. I think that they'll, they'll continue on um, and then to try to take it, run it out till December. To So in short, no, don't be worried about a government shutdown at this point. Granted, Congress only has so long before they uh, uh, go on recess this Thursday. Uh, once they return in September, they really just have that month of September to figure out government funding. Otherwise, as soon as September 30th, we could risk a government shutdown. Those two items on the agenda for the next several days, but certainly that month of August, uh, they're going to be sorely missed up here on Capitol Hill, especially when they get back and they just have four weeks to figure out what government spending looks like for 2024 or risk a government shutdown. Veronica? A lot to get done. All right, Nathaniel Reed live on Capitol Hill. Nate, thank you. So the Justice Department is suing Texas and its Governor Greg Abbott over a floating barrier in the Rio Grande. The roughly 1,000 foot barrier is a tactic designed to keep migrants from crossing into the United States illegally. The suit says Texas installed it illegally without permission from the cities on both sides of the border. National political correspondent Kevin Cirilli says Governor Abbott remains defiant. It's known as Eagle Pass, a portion of the Rio Grande River that Texas Governor Greg Abbott says needs some type of blocking. That's why he's installed a thousand feet of buoys with barbed wire as a deterrent 
for immigrants crossing the Rio Grande illegally. That's the length of more than three football fields. He says it's needed for him to do his job. The White House disagrees. We believe that statute does not apply in any way uh, because uh, what the state of Texas is doing uh, through those buoys uh, is not in violation of that statute because Texas is defending its sovereignty and its constitutional right to secure the border of our state and our country. And instead of wanting to, or undermining, I should say, instead of coming to the table and trying to figure out a way to work together, uh, he continues to do this really uh, cruel uh, unjust, inhumane uh, ways of moving forward with a, with a system that has been broken for decades. While that battle plays out in court, another political battle is around the corner, given that comprehensive bipartisan immigration reform has largely eclipsed Congresses in recent sessions. And Americans are divided on how they feel about immigration. According to the most recent immigration Gallup tracking poll, 68% of Americans think that immigration is a good thing, with 27% viewing it as a bad thing. But the partisan breakdown tells a different story. Amongst Republicans, 73% think that immigration should decrease, compared with 18% of Democrats. And just 1 in 10 Republicans thinks that immigration should increase, compared with nearly 4 in 10 Democrats. All of this comes as immigration has emerged as a key issue in the Republican presidential primary, with just a few short weeks away from that first Republican debate. Reporting from Washington, Kevin Cirilli, Scripps News. The death of a son and the actions of a mother that motivated the civil rights movement will now be eternally recognized in America. President Biden just signed a proclamation establishing a monument to honor Emmett Till and his mother, Mamie Till Mobley. Till was the black teen abducted and brutally murdered by two white supremacists in Mississippi in 1955 after he was accused of whistling at a white woman. His mother chose to hold an open casket funeral to show the world what happened to her son. Today's monument designation comes on what would have been his 82nd birthday. National correspondent Tammy Eswick has more on the significance of this proclamation. Emmett Till was 14 years old, visiting relatives in Mississippi in 1955 when he was kidnapped, tortured, and killed. Carolyn Bryant Donham had accused him of whistling at her and making sexual advances at the store where she worked in the small rural community of money. An all-white jury acquitted her husband and his half-brother of murder, but they later confessed to killing Till in an interview. President Biden's creation of a national monument honoring Till and his mother includes three sites. The first, the Roberts Temple Church of God in Christ in Chicago's Bronzeville neighborhood, where Till's funeral was held. His mother, Mamie Till Mobley, insisted on an open coffin so the world could bear witness to his violent death. Emmett Till's mother in 1955, when she made the decision to have an open casket funeral, that not only showcased and demonstrated her character, her self-determination, her activism, but it was a catalytic moment in the American civil rights movement. The second site, Grabal Landing in Tallahatchie County, Mississippi, where locals say Till's mutilated body was pulled from the Tallahatchie River. And finally, here at the Tallahatchie Courthouse in Sumner, Mississippi, where the trial of the men accused of killing the boy was held. As a student, Mississippi State Senator David Jordan attended the five-day trial. He remembers the atmosphere in the courtroom. I could tell that nobody was serious about it, kind of mockery of a trial at that time. Till's family has remained vigilant in keeping his name and the memory of his murder alive. I spoke with his cousin, Deborah Watts, last year. He did whistle, but whistling is not a, should not be a death sentence. What Emmett did not do which is what they've clarified also has made those sexual advances towards Carolyn Bryant. Designating these sites as national monuments, like the Lincoln Memorial and the Little Bighorn Battlefield Monument in Montana, will protect them from commercial development. And vandalism would be a felony punishable by fines and up to 10 years in prison. Tammy Eswick, Scripps News, Tallahatchie County, Mississippi.
And still to come on Scripps News Live, investigators in New York combing the home of the suspected Gilgo Beach killer for new evidence. We'll have details on the search, plus the Biden administration pushing insurance companies to provide more mental health coverage. We'll explain after a quick break. Are you on Medicaid and Medicare? The U.S. government recently announced that 12.2 million citizens are eligible for additional benefits beyond what they received from the original Medicare or Medicaid. These benefits may include $2,500 of dental credit, $900 of pharmacy credit, plus you could be adding up to $164 back into your Social Security check every month. Certain beneficiaries qualify for specific benefits based on income verification. It's easy to see if you qualify. Call Go Medicare at 800 7 1-8-0-4-1-4. And see if you're one of over 12 million who may qualify. For $2,500 of dental credit, $900 of pharmacy credit. Plus, you could be adding up to $164 back into your Social Security check every month. Certain beneficiaries qualify for specific benefits based on income verification. This call is 100% free with no obligation to enroll. At 800-718-0414. Are you on Medicaid and Medicare? The U.S. government recently announced that 12.2 million citizens are eligible for additional benefits beyond what they received from the original Medicare or Medicaid. These benefits may include $2,500 of dental credit, $900 of pharmacy credit. Plus, you could be adding up to $164 back into your Social Security check every month. Certain beneficiaries qualify for specific benefits based on income verification. Call Go Medicare at 800 718 0414. If you have recently turned 65, you may be able to enroll in a new plan today that may include benefits like $2,500 of dental credit, $900 of pharmacy credit. This call is 100% free with no obligation to enroll. So call it a day. At 800 718 0414. That's 800 718 0414. There's a new victim of identity theft every three seconds. And checking your credit score or bank statements may not be enough to alert you. That's because identity threats appear in more places than you realize. Identity thieves can use your information to open loans, transfer home titles, even commit crimes. Someone stole my information and tried to buy a car in my name. LifeLock monitors for threats to your identity, including ones you may miss, and alerts you if there's an issue. And if you're a victim, your dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. If something happens, you have somebody fighting for you. All plans backed by LifeLock's million-dollar protection package, including reimbursement for stolen funds. I know LifeLock has me covered. LifeLock. Identity theft protection starts here. Call the number on your screen or visit LifeLock.com 25 now and use promo code 25 now to save 25% on your first year of identity theft protection. Enroll now. President Biden has announced a new landmark rule to improve mental health care for millions of Americans. It's a new rule that will push insurance companies to increase their mental health care coverage. Let's get you out live to Washington where we find our Haley Bull who's standing by for us. Haley, tell us more about this new rule and the president's plan. How will it impact millions of Americans when it comes to seeking mental health care coverage? Good afternoon, Veronica. This proposed rule is all about access to mental health care. Administration officials say one of the challenges that remains is too many people who are insured still having to pay too high out-of-pocket costs for that care. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, about one in five adults in the U.S. live with a mental illness, but in 2021, less than half received services. Now, officials believe this proposed rule will help improve access to care, comparable payments for mental health care professionals, and incentivize more to join that workforce. Now, the proposed rule uh, aims to stop evasion from legislation that was passed back in 2008 that called for mental health care benefits to be covered the same as physical health care benefits. Now, when we look specifically at this proposal, it would require plans to look at the outcomes from those coverage rules and then improve access. That means including more professionals in network 
and looking to cut down some of the red tape. It also specifies that plans can't use more restrictive prior authorizations or narrower networks uh, than that that they use for medical benefits and that they need to use the same factors as that uh, when laying out their out of network payment rates. It also requires plans uh, to comply with that legislation to help close loopholes. Now, near Tandon, the White House domestic policy advisor told Scripps News that this is a cornerstone piece for the administration. Listen. Been trying to enforce, and when they uh, when they've seen non-compliance, they have been enforcing. The rule requires compliance across the board, so we are quite confident with the strictures here, with the requirements that insurers will comply. Because essentially, what we're doing is taking away one of the tools of evasion for insurance companies and ensuring that they don't have that possibility anymore. So that we will deliver real a real difference for people. Now, the president is set to give remarks on this later this afternoon, but this adds another layer to a series of steps the administration has focused on when it comes to uh, mental health care in America, Veronica. All right, Haley Bull reporting live outside of the White House. Haley, thank you so much for the update. We'll be circling back with you. Yeah. Well, from psychedelics to plant therapy, doctors have been, have been thinking outside of the box when it comes to how to treat mental health. Amber Strong has the details for us. On this Virginia horse farm. He may eat your camera. He's ridiculous. Transformations are taking place. Can you come this way? Oh. <laughs> there are no riding lessons. Here, every creature is on equal footing. My horses are at liberty, just like we are, to engage and disengage. Uh, that's important. Therapist Darla Rinshaw says horses, by nature, have the ability to strip away walls. You can't lie to a horse. If you're not showing up and being authentic, for instance, like if you're fear fearful and you're trying to pretend like you're not, they already know it. She uses the facility to treat people with PTSD and other forms of trauma through equine assisted therapy, or EAT. It's the energy exchange, it's their ability to sync their heart rate and their breath with ours, and it's as if you become just one living, breathing, moving organism with them. The treatment involves leading and grooming the horses and gaining trust. Are we friends? Can you come with me? Can you come with me? Come with me. Oh, no. It's also about controlling your emotions, something I experienced during my time with Onyx, a horse who'd previously experienced his own trauma. You're tight in the chest. In the chest and arm, yes. And it's... What did you say? Nervous? Yes. So if you go into the nervous with the tightness in your chest, ask yourself, what is the negative belief I hold about myself? Right, baby? <laughs> to learn more, we traveled to New York to see a man about a horse, literally. Horses are very perceptive animals. They can smell and feel stress. And fear. Dr. Yuval Neria runs the Man of War Project at Columbia University and says bringing together horses and PTSD patients makes sense on many levels. Horses are prey animals, suggesting that they never feel completely safe and secured. They always on guard. And veterans with PTSD or people with PTSD actually suffer from a very similar problem. 92% of veterans who participated in Columbia's EAT Man of War study not only completed the treatment, but many showed improvements in two distinct areas, PTSD and depression, suggesting the treatment could be effective beyond anxiety-based diagnoses. The tricky part? Trauma was never actually discussed. So it's all about engaging more and more with those with less and less avoidance, less and less of fear. Nerea, a decorated war veteran himself, says often veterans don't thrive in traditional therapy settings and that the drop-off rate is high. It's different, though, on the farm. They do not feel this treatment as demanding or artificial, you know. They, so it feels fun, it feels rewarding. Are you still learning about people? The horses at Renshaw's Wind of Change farm are rescues, something she says is important, with every being here finding reassurance from the other. This is a place to be your authentic you. It's a deeply, for lack of a better word, spiritual process, experience, and it's all about the experience. Amber Strong, Powhatan County, Virginia.
Coming up next on Scripps News Live, a shortage of air traffic controllers causing major delays right now at the airport. Now one school is offering a solution to ease the problem. And later, a Scripps News exclusive investigation into an overlooked toll of the fentanyl epidemic, how small children are becoming innocent victims and the failures to protect them. Attention all seniors, you can now get up to $50,000 for your funeral and other final expenses, including your credit card debt with no medical exam, starting at less than a dollar a day. Oh, honey, you're dead and I can't stop talking about this baby that's coming. We've also been thinking a lot about our future and no matter what, we wanna make sure we aren't leaving you and your family with any of our debts. Just last week, we read that the price of a funeral can be $8,000 or more. Wow, Jeff and I definitely would not have the money to pay for that. And that's just a funeral. But you don't have to worry. We called, and with one phone call, we were eligible for $50,000 for our funeral and final expenses. Well, that's great, but don't you need to take a medical exam to qualify? You and Mom have some health issues. No. There's no medical exam, and we were able to get coverage right over the phone. And our rates can never be increased, our benefits can never be decreased, and our coverage can never be canceled. I'm so glad you made that call. Don't leave loved ones with your debt. Call 800-339-7996 now and see if you qualify for up to $50,000 for your funeral and other final expenses starting at less than a dollar a day. There's no medical exam and you can be approved even if you have pre-existing health conditions. Your rates can never be increased, your benefits can never be decreased, and your coverage can never be canceled. There's no obligation. Call 800-339-7996 now. There's no paperwork, no no hidden fees and no waiting periods and you can start coverage right over the phone starting at less than a dollar a day call 800-339-7996 that's 800-339-7996 800-339-7996 we really don't want people to think of feeding food like ours as spoiling their dogs Good, real food is simple. It looks like food, it smells like food. It's what dogs are supposed to be eating. No living being should ever eat processed food for every single meal of their life. It's amazing to me how many people write in about their dogs changing for the better. The farmer's dog is just our way to help people take care of them. Where is it, where is it, where is it? Back up, back up, back up. How long has she been down? Over 250 children, toddlers, infants are dead or have nearly died to fentanyl overdoses. And in many of these cases, authorities knew the children were at risk. Would you say it's fair that some of these children fell through the cracks? Scripps News investigates the silent toll of the fentanyl epidemic tonight at 8, 7 central, only on Scripps News Tonight. reminder right here we'd like to hear from you give us a call on our scripts news viewer hotline that number is toll free 1-833-4 scripts feel free to share your comments and your story ideas all right investors are hoping to turn it up to 12 today the dow jones has gone up 11 straight days in a row this is the longest winning streak now in six years. Taking a look at the boards this hour, lots of green on the boards. The Dow is up 87 points. The S&P is up 19 and the NASDAQ is up 123 points. Traders right now feeling good about the economy, also earnings as they await the Fed's decision as to whether they will be raising interest rates. We're gonna keep an eye on it for you. So it appears that there is not gonna be a UPS strike. The company and Teamsters have announced a contract agreement. The union is calling the settlement historic and overwhelmingly lucrative. It says wage increases will benefit full and part-time employees and delivery trucks will be air conditioned. The deal is a five-year agreement pending approval from the rank and file. In the meantime, FedEx pilots will be returning to the bargaining table after their union rejected a tentative labor deal. It included a 30% pay increase and an equal boost in the pension benefits for nearly 5,200 pilots. 
Still unclear as to why the union wasn't pleased with this deal, but even with the rejection, FedEx pilots aren't expected to strike anytime soon. The nation has been currently grappling with a pilot shortage for passenger airlines and cargo carriers. Now, if you are traveling anytime soon or you know someone who is, your airline will probably warn you about the possibility of delays. But weather and staffing shortages are just part of the problem. There's a critical shortage of air traffic controllers as well. National correspondent James Packard goes inside a leading school that's been training the next generation. Well, we're at Academy Airport. Welcome to the country's preeminent airport for student air traffic controllers. Runway 28 right at Charlie Taxi via Gulf Bravo, hold short runway 16. Here, pilots taking off and landing on busy runways trust the eyes and ears of young controllers learning on the job. Southwest 777, climb and maintain 17,000. As real as it gets, that is for a simulation. This is how it works in real approach controls. This is the learning laboratory inside New York City's Vaughn College, a school with one of the country's top rated programs churning out trainee air traffic controllers. If a controller is training and you want to train three or four hours a day, there may not be enough certified controllers to be able to accomplish that in a shift. So the consistency is not there. And a training backlog has left many of those would-be controllers out of official jobs and control facilities woefully understaffed. Here in New York, the FAA warned airlines and travelers this summer would be a challenge. At the facility that controls planes coming in and out of New York's airports, the FAA has just 54% of the controllers it needs. A massive disruption in late June that canceled thousands of flights nationwide started because New York area controllers were too short-staffed to handle an onslaught of severe summer weather. You're down to five or six controllers, seven controllers controlling the whole area which is it's not unsafe because uh, controllers are not going to take more than they can handle, but it does slow the system down. And now these young cadets could join the force. Across the more than 300 facilities under the FAA's purview, the agency plans to hire 15,000 more controllers over the next decade. Just fell in love with it. Even as a kid, like, I would always be outside watching aircraft. I kind of just grew up with it. My mom worked for Lufthansa Airlines, and so we got to fly around. Vaughn College feels the need, but the instructors also know these new controllers have to be trained right. You cannot overstate how important doing this is. James Packard, Scripps News, New York. And that was James Packard reporting there for us. So are these staffing shortages putting us at risk? Don't miss a 30-minute special, Air Pressure, Airlines Under Fire. James will be back with even more reporting on this. And that special will air tomorrow night at 8.30, 7.30 Central, right here on Scripps Newsline. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. For the audience leaving us, your local programming is up next. Remember, you can always check us out on ScriptsNews.com. If you are staying with us right now, we have much more news headed your way on Scripps News Live, including what's next in the case of the Alabama woman who went missing for two days. She just apologized and confessed that she lied about her disappearance. We'll be right back. is a paid advertisement for legal services. Breaking news for anyone who spent time at Camp Lejeune before 1988. President Biden has signed the PACT Act. This means you may be entitled to significant compensation from the federal government. If you or a family member spent time at Camp Lejeune, you consumed toxic water known to cause serious health issues, injuries, and even death. A special hotline has been established. Call now for a free case evaluation. Just call 800-793-0837 now. Even if you've been turned down in the past, this new legislation allows you to refile a claim. This will not affect your eligibility for VA disability benefits. These are benefits you earned and deserve. We encourage anyone who spent time at Camp Lejeune to file a claim. Call now to see if you or loved ones qualify for significant compensation from the federal government. Don't wait. Just call 800-793-0837 now. That's 800-793-0837. The cast iron always pan is a single cast construction with a heavy duty base. This means it holds heat really well and cooks evenly. It's guaranteed to sell out, so you should probably get yours like now. 
Meet Pair Eyewear, the only glasses brand that lets you change your glasses like you change your clothes. Simply snap on a top frame and you're ready to go. Now you can customize a look for every outfit, every occasion, and every day. With hundreds of designs to choose from, Pear makes it easy to match your style and build a collection you'll love. You can even snap on a sun top to instantly turn your pair into sunglasses. Start building your collection today at PearEyewear.com. Welcome to this year's cheese rolling competition. Who will catch the cheese and win the $500 prize? Who looks like we got a first timer coming down the hill now? Barrel rolling down the hill. That's going to leave a mark. Yeah, it is. Yeah. There's an easier way you can get up to $500 in five minutes or less when you download Dave. Hey there, welcome to Scripps News Live. Great to see you on a Tuesday. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. It is time now to get you caught up on the day's top stories. U.S. officials say that Ukraine will soon receive up to $400 million in military aid from the United States. The package will include weaponry for advanced air defense systems and small surveillance Hornet drones. They are largely used for intelligence gathering. At a time when there are those who seek to ban books very history. We're making it clear, crystal, crystal clear. That was President Biden speaking in the last hour before signing a proclamation to establish a national monument honoring Emmett Till and his mother, Mamie Till Mobley. Till was the black teen who was abducted and brutally murdered by white supremacists after whistling at a white woman in Mississippi in 1955. His mother insisted on an open coffin funeral so the world could view her son's violent death. The monument will feature three sites, two in Mississippi and the church in Chicago, where Till's funeral was held. Today would have been his 82nd birthday. Republican presidential candidate Governor Ron DeSantis was not injured in a traffic accident this morning in Chattanooga, Tennessee. He and other staffers were on their way to a campaign event. No one was injured. DeSantis has three fundraisers scheduled in Tennessee today. Developing now, LeBron James' son, Bronny, is in the hospital after suffering cardiac arrest. A family spokesperson said the younger James was rushed to the hospital yesterday after a basketball workout at the University of Southern California. The spokesperson said medical staff treated Bronny on site before being taken to the hospital. He's now in stable condition and is no longer in the ICU. The family is asking for respect and privacy during this time. Bronny is an incoming freshman at the university who committed to playing for the Trojans in May. He was one of the top high school prospects in the entire country. Well, what many people have been wondering is now sadly true. An Alabama woman who disappeared for two days was the focus of a massive search. She now says that she made the entire thing up. There was no toddler wandering next to an interstate when she called 911, and she was never kidnapped. National correspondent Stephanie Sandoval updates us now on her unraveling story. The Alabama woman who earlier this month went missing for 49 hours is now confirming to police that she was never kidnapped at all. Her attorney sent a statement to the police chief of Hoover, which is 12 miles outside of Birmingham, that says there was no kidnapping and that his client did not see a baby on the side of the road and that she never even left the city. The search for Russell began after she disappeared less than two weeks ago after calling 911 about a child she says she saw walking on the side of Interstate 459 outside Hoover. But investigators started questioning the validity of her story after they found internet searches on her phone like, do you have to pay for an Amber Alert? Also searching that Liam Neeson movie taken about a woman who is abducted. Russell told detectives she was abducted by a man when she pulled over on the side of the highway to help the toddler, claiming she was then held captive at a home where a woman fed her cheese crackers but eventually escaped. Hoover police said yesterday that despite this turn of events, the investigation continues. We'll continue to investigate. We're still trying to determine where, those, where she was those, during those 49 hours. But uh, I am glad that we received this. It, it at least puts, uh, puts some of the social media super sleuths uh, hopefully at rest for a little bit. Police also not ruling out that Russell could face criminal charges, but the case could have even uh, far-reaching 
implications, according to Natalie Wilson, a co-founder of the Black and Missing Foundation. We cannot let one case set a precedent for all missing persons cases of color because we cannot afford to lose the progress that we have made. And Wilson also told Morning Rush last week that 40 percent of those reported missing are people of color and that social media coverage is often the best way to make sure that these cases go viral in an effort to bring them home. Guys. All right, Stephanie, thank you for that. So investigators continue to gather evidence against the accused Gilgo Beach serial killer. Investigators hauled boxes from Rex Howerman's home on Long Island yesterday. Authorities are also digging up his yard looking for evidence. Hureman is charged with killing three women whose remains were found more than a decade ago at nearby Gilgo Beach, and he is the prime suspect in the death now of a fourth woman. Well, the images are disturbing. Body camera video of police in Ohio releasing a police dog on an unarmed black man. Earlier this month, 23-year-old Jadarius Rose was getting out of his truck with his hands raised after a half an hour police chase. Justice correspondent Jamal Andres says the attack occurred even though you hear another state trooper repeatedly warning, don't release the dog. Do not release the dog with his hands up. Miscommunication or blatant disregard between officers ultimately led to an unarmed black man being attacked by a police dog after he surrendered. Do not! Do not! Do not! Get the dog off of it! With several other officers on the scene pleading for the dog to be stopped. 23-year-old Jadarius Rose took Ohio State Patrol officers on a nearly half-hour police chase behind the wheel of an 18-wheeler. Rose finally exited the vehicle after officers deflated his tires. Do not, do not let them, run. don't release the dog. While the Ohio State Highway Patrol initiated the traffic stop, it was the local Circleville Police Department who released the dog on Rose. Body camera video shows a Circleville officer telling Rose, go on the ground or you're going to get bit. Shortly afterward, despite warning from the Ohio State Patrol, Circleville officers released their dog to bite Rose. An Ohio State Patrol officer can be heard repeatedly yelling, get the dog off of him. One officer walks away from the scene, covering her mouth with her hands. Rose was ultimately arrested for failure to comply and treated for wounds at a local hospital. In a statement, the Ohio State Patrol said, quote, as troopers were attempting to gain compliance by providing verbal commands to the suspect, the Circleville Police Department deployed their canine, which resulted in the suspect being bitten. The local NAACP chapter called the incident barbaric and unjust. It also said pending an investigation, the Circleville PD officer should be fired. According to a report from the Marshall Project, a nonprofit news organization, there are more than 15,000 police dogs across the country, but no real nationwide database tracking their behavior or how often they're used as weapons. You know, we found that, that these dogs are, are biting, you know, thousands of people every year. Um, and causing serious or, you know, even fatal injuries in, in some rare cases. Ashley Remkes is an investigative editor and reporter for AL.com, which worked on the report with the Marshall Project. Very often, um, dog bite cases start with a traffic stop or a traffic violation. When the dogs are used can vary, you know, from state to state, from department to department, and also with different handlers. In addition, there are no national requirements for law enforcement dog handlers. Jamal Andrus, Scripps News. Tonight, Scripps News investigates the silent toll of the fentanyl epidemic. Our team found dramatic overdoses involving babies and toddlers in nearly every state. Children too young to know that they are picking up a deadly drug. It's been stealing the lives of hundreds of kids, many who aren't even old enough to walk or talk. Scripps News and National Investigative Correspondent Lori Jane Gleha joins us now live with her exclusive investigation here. And Lori Jane, I understand that you uncovered dozens of missed opportunities to protect these kids. What more can you tell us about this? Yeah, Veronica, we analyzed hundreds of cases in nearly every state. That means we looked at body-worn camera, we read police reports, we read through autopsies and child fatality reports and listened to 911 calls, and we found something alarming. In the midst of this fentanyl epidemic, the safety systems we have in place to protect children are sometimes not enough to save a child. Hey, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? 
this Alabama sheriff's deputy is rushing to save a life. Back up, back up, back up. How long has she been down? How long has she been down? She's just one okay, year old, poisoned by fentanyl. The deputy administers a powerful opioid antidote, and in an instant, she's breathing again. But for so many other children, help often comes too late. Where's the fentanyl at that he got into? Oh, he had to have, my purse is open. Oh my God, no. Where, Breathe for me, okay? Breathe for me. You have anything in your mouth? Our exclusive Scripps News investigation analyzed more than 260 fentanyl overdose cases nationwide from the past few years, including deaths mm -hmm. and near fatalities involving innocent infants, toddlers, and young children. In about half of the incidents we examined, we found prior red flags. The children were from families who were already on the radar of police or child protective services for drug abuse or child neglect. But despite these warning signs, the children still overdosed. And as part of this three-part investigation, we went deep inside some of these cases to look at specifically what went wrong. We are trying to shine light on what might save more lives, Veronica, and what might prevent more deaths. All right, Lori Jane Gleha live for us in Denver. Lori, thank you. You can catch a full investigation into fentanyl and children on Scripps News tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, in the meantime, we are tracking a deadly heat wave that's fueling health and safety concerns. Also, a cancer survivor is on the front lines in the fight for cleaner water. It was traumatizing, but I wanted to take what I went through and what our family went through. We wanted to make a difference. Her efforts to spread awareness about the dangers of forever chemicals. And a reminder, you can find our stories and much more online. Check us out at scriptsnews.com. That's on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Threads. I've been putting off getting life insurance and I'm not getting any younger. Have you been thinking about getting a life insurance plan but just keep putting it off? Was that a yes? Then this message is for you. I'm David Denowitz and I know the importance of life insurance. And that's why I'm here to tell you it's not too late to get the coverage you need. If you're between the ages of 45 and 85, you can get a policy with a benefit of up to $25,000 and rates available at $5 a week. The phone lines are now open. Just call 800-354-6059. And your acceptance is guaranteed. I have a pre-existing medical condition. Is my acceptance guaranteed? Yes. Can I get accepted without a medical exam? Yes. If you're between 45 and 85, you can't be turned down for this guaranteed acceptance life insurance regardless of your health. Plus, there's no medical exam and no health questions. And rates start at just $5 a week. Remember, if you're between 45 and 85, you can't be turned down regardless of your health. Nothing's more important than family. So call now, pick up the phone, and get guaranteed acceptance life insurance today. Just call 800-354-6059. I'm 72 and on a fixed income. Is my acceptance guaranteed? Yes, your acceptance is guaranteed and your rate can never go up for any reason. You can't be turned down regardless of your health. There's just one simple question. Are you between 45 and 85? If you answered yes, don't wait another minute. Call now. The call is absolutely free and there is no obligation to enroll. Just call 800-354-6059. That's 800-354-6059. I was hanging out in the bathroom inspecting my butt and I noticed back there, don't make me say the word butt. Your rectum? Yes. Let's take a look. Dr. Brooks just gets you. Search, read reviews, book a doctor on ZocDoc. One way to avoid expensive car repair bills is to be a race car driver. The other is endurance. Endurance saved me more than $7,000. Without endurance, breakdowns can cost thousands. With endurance, you're covered. Endurance covers nearly every car on the road. Plus, you pick the mechanic you trust. Act now for $300 off any plan, plus a year of elite benefits and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Call 1-855-588-2580 now.
The why is where curiosity is intentional. Because when you ask the why behind the news, the world opens up before your eyes. The Why, Saturday nights at 8, 7 central, only on Scripps News. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. A study found climate change is a factor in heat waves right now across Europe, China, and the United States. Researchers are saying the extreme heat wouldn't have happened without the buildup of greenhouse gases, specifically heat trapped gases from the burning of coal, oil, and natural gas. Combined with a stagnant atmosphere, researchers found the gases made the heat wave in the U.S. 3.6 degrees warmer and pushed the European heat wave 4.5 degrees higher. Several climate experts say the Earth hasn't been this hot in about 120,000 years. A relentless heat wave in the United States is claiming lives and posing a threat to the elderly. Some areas have experienced triple digit temperatures for weeks now, and the National Weather Service warns the extreme conditions are here to stay. Scripps News correspondent Addy Guajardo breaks down the heat dome that's stretching from the southwest to the east right now. Relentless extreme heat breaks records around the world. It's now almost certain that July will be the warmest month that this planet has seen in recorded history. Phoenix is at the epicenter of the heat dome, shattering countless records this month. Tuesday and Wednesday could again be record setting. This week in Phoenix, temperatures are forecast that remain above 110 degrees, a heat streak going on more than three weeks and counting, beating the all time record set in 1974 by at least one week. Because it's super, super hot. Across the country, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says more than 5,000 heat and rainfall records have been broken over a 30 day period. Over in El Paso, Texas, now more than 40 days of 100 plus degree temperatures, with no relief forecasted until Saturday. Heat associated deaths have been reported across the nation. Most recently, two women hiking in a Nevada state park were found dead. Temperatures there reached 114 degrees. Medico, anybody need Medico? Here in Arizona's Maricopa County, officials confirmed 18 heat associated deaths since April. 69 remain under investigation. Medical experts say age and prescription medication plays a role on how the body reacts to dangerous heat. Keep an eye out for the elderly. You have to remember their bodies don't adjust to the climate changes as someone say in their 30s. The National Weather Service forecasting no relief in sight, predicting sizzling temperatures to scorch the Midwest and East Coast later this week. And that was national correspondent Addy Guajardo reporting there for us. Well, a recent government study is raising concerns about the quality of our drinking water. Researchers found potentially harmful compounds known as forever chemicals in nearly half of the tap water that was tested nationwide. Ryan Kruger with Scripps News Fort Myers spoke with an expert about the health risks that we're facing and introduces us to a woman who is fighting for cleaner water. Stell Bailey's life changed forever 10 years ago. I was diagnosed with cancer in 2013 alongside my little brother, our uncle who's not blood related, my father and our family dog. So we all got cancer, boom, boom, boom in the same year. Without a family history of cancer, her doctors told her it was likely caused by her environment, specifically the forever chemicals used at the military installations near her home where she grew up on Florida's Space Coast. It was traumatizing, but I wanted to take what I went through and what our family went through. We wanted to make a difference. That's when Bailey launched Fight for Zero, a nonprofit against toxic waste and PFAS chemicals. PFAS chemicals are known as a forever chemical. They do not break down in the environment. They build up in your body. They cause havoc on your health. PFAS chemicals are in products we use in our everyday lives. Things like cleaners, especially ones that target grease and stains, personal care products like shampoo and makeup, and a lot of water resistant materials. Okay, so a rain jacket, your umbrella, they're all coated with these kinds of chemicals. But here's the problem. These chemicals don't break down naturally. So if these are thrown away, they leach through the landfill, get into our groundwater, and that's how these forever chemicals stay in our environment. It's literally raining PFAS on us. Earlier this month, the U.S. Geological Survey posted the results of a five-year study where scientists tested private wells and public water sources all over the country. 
In Florida, researchers found detectable amounts of PFAS chemicals in the tap water in the Gainesville, Tampa, and Fort Myers areas. Nationwide, researchers estimate almost half of the tap water in the U.S. carries these forever chemicals. Should we be concerned about that? Absolutely. You should be concerned and you should be upset. Dr. Nora Demers is a biology professor at Florida Gulf Coast University. She says the fact that these chemicals are in our water, that's just the tip of the iceberg. It being in the water is a symptom of a larger disease. Unless we go after the disease and address the fact that these chemicals are appearing in our water, we're going to keep having problems. And those problems are extensive. Autism, ADD, ADHD, obesities, cancers, um, reproductive problems are all linked to exposures to these chemicals. And this stuff's in our drinking water. It's in our drinking water, it's in our food, it's on our clothes, it's in our shampoos, it's in our conditioners. There are a dozen utility departments that provide drinking water to Fort Myers and Lee County residents. Lee County Utilities told Fox 4 Investigates they first started testing for PFAS chemicals a decade ago and are currently conducting new tests for the next two years. They have not detected any PFAS chemicals in the tap water. Rest assured, the Lee County Utilities water is safe to drink, the county told Fox 4 Investigates in a statement. To ensure the safety of our drinking water, LCU has implemented various treatment options at four out of our five water treatment plants. Bailey says there are steps that you can take to fight back against these chemicals. If you do have it in your tap water, I highly recommend getting a filtration system that will lessen that exposure. Meanwhile, back at FGCU, Professor Demers says it may come down to changing our habits as consumers to eventually stop using these types of chemicals. I'm Ryan Kruger reporting. So to come on Scripps News Live, a mother who lost her son to gun violence is giving children the gift of music in hopes of saving them from the streets. I know they can't play the guitar until I put one in their lap. And look what happened. Take a chance and find out what their gift truly is. How she is now using her pain to make positive change. And don't forget, you can always count on Scripps News for all of your news throughout the primetime hours beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern. Hey everyone, it's me Sebastian and it is a beautiful day today. We have so much to be grateful for. So just remember, if you see someone without a smile, give them one of yours. I just love inspiring people to be the best they can be. And the reason I'm able to inspire so many people is because people like you who inspire me with your support of Shriners Hospitals for Children. Since I was little, I've broken a hundred bones and I've had 19 surgeries. Shriners Hospitals for Children was with me every step of the way. But more than that, they've given me the confidence to know I can do whatever I set my mind to. Like right now, I've set my mind to sharing my smile with you. Did you get it? Because of people like you, I can play the violin. Yeah. I can play piano. Yeah. I can Irish dance. The help I get is only possible because of caring people like you who pick up the phone and call the number on your screen to make your monthly gift. And when you call or go online right now to donate $19 a month or more, we'll send you this adorable Love to the Rescue blanket as a thank you and a reminder of all the smiles you're bringing to kids' faces every day. Kids like me. And me. And me. And me. So what are you waiting for? You can inspire kids like me by visiting loveshiners.org. After all, you can't help everyone, but you can help someone. So let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for giving. Join me and bring a smile to the world with your monthly gift today. Please call now. If operators are busy, please call again or go to loveshiners.org right away. Join me and bring a smile to the world. My anxiety became overwhelming, like I need help. And I just found her, it's like, this is pretty incredible. Right away, I got matched with a provider. I noticed a huge difference. Medication brought me all back together. Get started today at forhers.com.
join renowned journalists and filmmakers. Oh my God. For news stories every week. What else do we have to take? Scripps News Showcase. Sunday nights at 9, 8 central on Scripps News. Hey there, welcome back to Scripps News Live. We'd like to hear from you. Give us a call on our Scripps News Viewer Hotline toll free. That number is one 833 scripps Feel free to share your comments and your story ideas. So a Tennessee woman is on a mission for more young people to just put down their guns and pick up a guitar instead. Forrest Sanders with Scripps News Nashville shows us why her fight against violence has been hitting close to home. One and two and ready, go. It's not lost on anyone in the Hadley Park Community Center today. How special this is. Kids are learning guitar in the same North Nashville neighborhood once full of the clubs playing host to so many rock and blues greats. These kids need to know where they're at. Nobody could be more proud of this crew than Clemmy Greenlee. They could turn out to be the next B.B. King. They can turn out to be the next Elvis Presley. Just as long as they invite me front row with my cane and my walker, because I'm about to be up in that age. But I'm coming to their concert. Yes. This is so much more than a guitar lesson for Clemmy. I'm so tired of hearing these killings. 20 years ago, Clemmy spoke to News Channel 5. And it's kind of scary because I'm not feeling. It's really scary. This was only hours after her son Rodriguez was shot and killed. I couldn't take my son off the streets. I tried and I tried and Lord knows I tried. I just could not reach him. That day changed the course of Clemmy's life. Her Nashville Peacemakers organization is constantly looking for ways to reach young people and curb violence. This group is called Good Tars and Not Guns. Clemmy assembled the team. That's Dave Noe, whose Charlieville nonprofit has given hundreds of music lessons to children over the past decade. Clemmy pulled in writer, producer, and artist Matthew McCoy. I love seeing the excitement and the curiosity. And member of the Nashville Peacemakers, James Lauderdale. To witness the progress, I mean, like today was amazing. Year after year, Clemmy has felt maybe it's time to retire from the mission. But for some reason, I dialed at 1-800-JESUS and he just gave me another run. A lot of times, young people want to learn things. Everybody's got the music in them, so how I know they can't play the guitar until I put one in their lap. And look what happened. Take a chance and find out what their gift truly is. Boris Sanders. Hats off to her and loved those heart shaped glasses as well. I'm Veronica Del Cruz. Thank you so much for joining us today. For the audience leaving us right now, your local programming is up next. Don't forget, you can always check us out on ScriptsNews.com. Now, if you're staying with us, we have much more news headed your way on Scripps News Live. I will be back with you at 3 p.m. Eastern. Lauren Magarino is up next, though. She has more of the day's top stories after a quick break. We'll be right back. If you have this, and you get this, you could end up with this. Unexpected out-of-pocket costs, which for those on Medicare or soon to be, is a good reason to take charge of your health care. So consider this, an AARP Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan from United Healthcare. Why? Because Medicare alone doesn't pay for everything. And what it doesn't pay for, like deductibles and co-pays, could really add up, even thousands of dollars a year. Medicare supplement plans help by paying some of what Medicare doesn't and making your out-of-pocket costs a lot more predictable. Call United Healthcare today and ask for your free decision guide. Learn more about plan options and rates to fit your needs. Now, if you like this, greater freedom, You'll love that Medicare supplement plans have no networks and no referrals needed. See any doctor, any specialist, anywhere in the U.S., as long as they accept Medicare patients. These types of plans also give you more flexibility when traveling in the U.S. 
your plan goes with you anywhere you go in the country. Even better, 